Aries, it's L here to do your weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, commenting, liking, sharing definitely the videos. It means a lot. So I continue to do so. Let's get into this. So I pull cards for the week for the sake of time. All right, let's see how Aries comes into the week. The three of earth. Nice. Okay. Uh, the advice for the week, the high priestess. Okay. The outcome for the week is the eight of water. All right, so this looks like very... So you may have a lot, an increase in in business. If you're a business owner, then you're having a lot of um, patrons come to your business. There's a lot of a lot more business here. Um, you're doing some high level quality work, and you're getting recognized for it. You may even be getting recognized via social media. Something is the advice here is for you is to expound on that talent. There's been some suppression here. You may have a hidden talent, uh, idea, uh, invention, something that is innately inherited, in, inherited. I can't talk today. That is uniquely, um, you know, I don't know why I cannot talk today. This is my second time doing this video over. Let's take a minute. Okay, so Aries, it looks like there's some opposition here in regards to the goals. Goals that you want to fulfill. You want to have something come to fruition. You may be doing two of something, or you may have your foot in one thing, and your whole, the rest of your body in another. So you've got your foot over here and then the entirety of your the rest of your body somewhere else so there's opposition and what it is you want to come to fruition you have suppressed how you feel or felt about things for a while or about a, a particular thing a certain thing this could even be a person too some of you it's definitely spiritually charged and connected here because I think you have reached a pinnacle of whatever level or success level it is you're, you're in in your career and whatever it is you do for, for money, earned income, and you're not feeling fulfillment in it anymore. You're wanting to do more. You're wanting to have more purpose in your life. So you're, you're on a quest to find that in search of that. Your soul is restless because there's something that you have suppressed. You need to get under some spiritual guidance, whether that's a person you know, or, or that is a practice of yours that maybe you have not part, partaken in in a while. You want to get back into that because that's going to help clear your mind so that you can make a clear and concise decision about how to act or enact or react to the feelings, the emotions, the the wanting to be doing more, the the quest of or the search of better or more fulfillment in what it is you do for earned income. Whatever you're doing, it, you're doing it well. You there's some level of mastery, expertise here. But now there's like you want to shift focus. This could be adding on another uh, product or service in your business. If it's business, this could be wanting to go back to school, learn something else that will give you more fulfillment. It could be anything. Um, but it's definitely something that's going to bring you spiritual connection like you're going to feel like this was meant just for you let's see what this is about a message closed 
Yeah, it's almost as if you're closed to the opportunity of continuing on on a certain path. It's like you've you've reached the pinnacle. Like it's close. You can't go any higher, so it's closed off to you. Now it's like okay, I can't reach any. I can't strive any higher here. Maybe I need to go and do something else that will bring me more fulfillment. For some of you, you're close to, uh, this could be a love affair, some romantic love affair. There was an element of drama here. You may be close to this. You may want to walk away from the third party situation. This is something you've been in for a very long time. Um, you, there could be, you could be the secret. You could have the secret person what not but it looks like there's an element of someone walking away um it could be an aquarius or um a piscean person maybe they um You may be giving the message that you're close to them coming back to you, especially if all they're offering is a third party situation or vice versa. They may be saying, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to try to work on my relationship or marriage or it's just I, it's too frustrating. There's competing goals. There's conflict, bothersome details, something you don't know, something that bothers you about this other person or career or something. OK, so Aries. It looks like a week of knowing that in career and finance something is for you and you need to expound on that energy and you need to really um, make the plan, write the vision, make it plain so that you can move in that direction. And then for some of you, it's about third party situations uh, in a situation where you're just not the, the, the main focus or goal here. Uh, and you may say, I don't want to do this anymore, or vice versa. Or it could be mutual. And so someone's on to um, betterment uh, in search of uh, why. In search of why they would even allow that, this, into their life. They're also in search of something more meaningful. They understand the, the lesson here and the spiritual ramifications and connection here you know with them and their life and then now they're on to better okay all right aries i hope that you have a really good week um it looks like your focus um take care stay tuned for the real with l okay all right take care guys hello everyone so today on l's real corner all right so today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos, uh, subscribing to the channel than men. So I apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex, just apply it to your life, right? Okay. All right. So. Emotionally unavailable men, women, cat, dog, whatever, are basically non-committal. Okay, Th these are non-committal people. These are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you, uh, with anything or with anybody. It, it might spill over into every facet of their life. We're talking about more so relationships, romantic relationships. Um, so that's, that's what we have here. Not, they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people. They could be married, uh, in love with another, or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit, um, and which hence they are emotional, emotionally unavailable. So when we look at, when we dissect this, this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable. The mind wants to rationalize that, that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that, no, 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because, 
you know, they tell me how much they like me, they compliment me, they touch me, we have sex, blah, blah, blah. So you rationalize and you say, they're not emotionally unavailable. They are whatever you want to deem them as. But emotionally unavailable, what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense suppo supposedly you know um it is a relationship it, it could be if an if then relationship if i do this then i'll get this this type of person the emotionally unavailable person it's not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't, emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an un emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason we've got some reasons here it could be more uh, to invest emotionally, okay? So you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex or when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes, so let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive, seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine so if they tell you that we're meeting on monday at 6 p.m at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my term, my terms, my routine. And their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No, they're not into that. There's no um, investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay, so this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman. Uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through 
relationships. Some of you even going through life. No real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah. Uh, contentment. Yeah. In this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more. Better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within you your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to ask the answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i said what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something, um, you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving. Or maybe they don't even know how to give, right? So you're trying to get water from the rock. Okay, granted. It can happen. It can happen. But I do want you to know that this is not, this is not a situation, an emotionally unavailable person this is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just It's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment, and you tell the person, and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time, and you've come along and asked me for a commitment, and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you. The page of swords. Be inquisitive, be curious, be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person. Learn your person. This is if you want commitment. Learn this person so you know what you're dealing with. You know who you're dealing with. The most, I say this every single time, or I ask the question, every time I, I do a reading, a personal reading, the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this, and how do they feel about this, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth, expecting, uh, the asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years. Well, we know that that is not the truth. You, We both go on about our lives. You find out that I've only been doing YouTube videos for two years. Uh, well, three years. And then you say, you come back to me. You say, well, I, I asked you the question. How long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I ha you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. 
Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along. You want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So, you you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably, most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say well i only see you on wednesday and friday what are you doing you know the other days of the week or i know you see you work blah 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 but um maybe we can get together on one of those other days if they start to be evasive then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games. They give you just a little bit or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know, emotionally unavailable person. All right? Because they become the seven of swords. Now, at this point, you can deal with this shit, I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um drinks i just i want to really spend more time with you around you because i would like to get to know you all right they're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid the rigidness of their routine right so um in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but, but do understand that good news 
and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries. And now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around. Or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They, they still come back around being evasive, seductive. You know, the same old thing that you might need to... Uh, this is why the, I put the world here. You... Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? you. Some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is, the that is hence, that's the operative word. It can be done. You're going to have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson. Walk away. A person can institute these types of this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own and there's no trauma um there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with when you're hurt you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation but when you are whole you're you're healed you you see the lesson in this and you're and you can walk away be able to walk away um, emotionally um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson, are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if, you, if the result is this person is coming back and being the same. And some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter. Because you now know how to deal with, with situations you can readily identify. Also, with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business or family or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy and you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know them. You do need to do the investigative work. The Page of Swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the King of Swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So we have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing it talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for for anybody um 
share this video, okay? Thank you guys. Take care, guys.